<laughs> you good? No, I literally, I was about to do it, then I saw you were here. Hi guys, and welcome to the latest YouTube video. So obviously it's been a little while, um, and the reason is, I'm, I'm just going to be honest, I've been very busy with coaching. Um, yeah, very, very, very busy and very lazy. Um, so we've got, instead of me filming now, um, we've got Pete behind the camera. And I'll put his uh, like link to his Instagram in the description. Um, but yeah, I appreciate Pete obviously helping out. So I'm looking at doing sort of weekly videos moving forwards. Um, I've called this series The Step Up. I made a pretty cool little logo, which you should see on the screen. I'll say it's pretty cool. What do you think? You like it? Was there, I, didn't really I made it myself. Step, I didn't really get the step up. I'll, I'll, I'll explain like it now if you want. Step up from what? Being like average being a small, best. Being a small natty, yeah. So the, the step up is basically, <laughs> obviously the quality of the videos um, with the fact that I'm not doing it myself, the fact that I'm stepping up in terms of just all, all of my life, because okay. I'm going to be getting a house. I'm not going to be living off my mum like you for the rest of my life. Yeah, makes sense. So I'll be getting a house. I'll uh, be <laughs> stepping up into the men's open classes. Um, and yeah, just I thought it's had quite a cool name. And a lot of the others have been done, haven't they? Level up. Uh, it's like, up. The, yeah, something, something up. up. So. Step down. Yeah, the step down. All, all, you never know. I might not place next time I compete. Yeah. I can't relate it just, it's about everything in life, not just about competing. So if I come last, then we can't just blame it on this, uh, the name of the, the series. The next one will be called The Step Down. The Step Down. Yeah. Anyway, um, so we're at Premier. I don't know if you can see the Premier Gym clothing behind. So we're at Premier Gym in Colville. So thank you to Rob for obviously letting us film here. Um, this is Monday, so it's pushing arms for both me and Reese. Uh, we're not on quite the exact same split, but it's relatively similar. I'm thinking I'll probably do a video based on each session. So I'm not going to go through every single session now. Um, basically, all you need to do is today is pushing arms. Um, and yeah, let's get into it. So at the start of push, uh, so I have a push session, I have a shoulder session, well delts and back, um, and then I have a quads and delts, so three times per week I'll start my sessions with calves, and then there's a nice little um, piece of kit that Premier have got, the, the tibialis raise that you'll have seen us doing, which is basically like the, the antagonist to the calf. So we'll do a calf raise, and then we'll superset it with the, uh, the tibialis raise. They're not the most demanding, and it's just to start the session with weaker points like my calves are horrendous as everybody will know so I'll start the session with them so I do train them even though it doesn't look like it um, and then we'll get into the exciting stuff <laughs> that's it look at that amazing you can't ask for more you just can't ask for more <laughs> every five minutes he'll be asking you to look at his bicep or his tricep yeah, that's, all it is. that's all it is just a vanity contest <laughs> Right, I'll give in a, basically we're starting off our actual pushing musculature kind of work with a single arm standing uh, lateral raise. We're utilising the Cybex Bravo here for, for no other reason than essentially a cable. Uh, we're pretty much aligning where we would want kind of the initial um, starting point of the lateral raise with our hip, therefore it's almost kind of following the, the, the movement that we should say through the shoulder through a lateral raise. So, Starting off with something to get the medial delt nice and short. Uh, obviously we're fresh both physically uh, and then likewise from a mental perspective. And it's not really going to take too much away from our pressing. Like sometimes we've had before where we do like a, 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 say a fly or something cuffed to kind of get the pec fully short. Or something like this, we're just trying to get a little bit of side delt activation. Uh, I have three total working sets. I think Finn has your two sets in the... Well, we both have three sets. Escalating volume. We've escalated volume, so three sets for each now. Uh, so this is basically the thing that we do to kind of prime us ready for uh, a cable press afterwards. And then we start with three main presses, which we'll go into in a short while. Josh Bridgman, if you're watching this video. Our said, cuffs got stolen, Our cuffs we got think. stolen, so we're utilizing these, which to be fair, Premier are decent. Most gyms yeah, don't actually have are. a pair of cuffs, but these are still pretty shit. They're big so, bridges. You're not good. Reese thinks he's best mates with Josh Bridgman. So Josh right. Bridgman commented, commented on one of my photos. He follows my girlfriend, which is a bit concerned. Doesn't follow me, cheers. <laughs> cheers but, uh, but yeah, when it comes to that, send us, send us some cuffs. No, some cuffs. Don't send us some cuffs, but. <laughs> so Finn, while we're on video, 
Why are we using the cuffs? <laughs> Imagine. That's what we need to use. Sell the cuffs. Oh, we, need, we need to give him some cuffs. <laughs> the reason we're using the cuffs is not necessarily just to reduce internal joint force. That's what everybody says. Um, but I actually just get a better connection. And what I'll often do as well is, so I'll, I'll, I'll use the cuff, but then I'll hold onto something. I almost try and visualize that. Like you'll see a lot of the time I'm closing my eyes because I'm trying to visualize a dumbbell because I know I connect well with a dumbbell. But in terms of the profile of a, of a dumbbell lateral, it's not going to be optimal. Uh, although it makes sense at the start of a session, it's just so light. If I'm doing a dumbbell, the bottom of the rep, the length and range, there's literally minimal, minimal load there, minimal challenge. Whereas here on a dumbbell is obviously very difficult. That's just due to the moment arm between, which is the distance between the load and the shoulder. You agree? I pretty much said the same too fast. first set I'll do a, a pause in the short just like an extra second there than I usually would um, just to try and tax out that short and range a little bit more when we're at the start of a session when we're a bit fresher makes sense to try and make the most of that short and range um, what we actually do later on as well is we finish off with a lateral but it's a little bit more length and focused in terms of we have the cables crossed over and we do it as an intensifier and we do some partials as well whereas with this at the start we are emphasizing that short a little bit more especially on set one with that pause. Set two and three, I generally keep it relatively continuous just with a slight pause at both ends. You do the same? Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, it's copying. Exact same, yeah. yeah. I've got the better dogs though. Yeah, but it's still copying. <laughs> Right, so I guess I'm the one explaining it again. Uh, it's almost like it's my video, but I think that'll be the next time we do one of these. Uh, so we have our first main press. This is going to be a D-handle cable chest press. Uh, fortunately here, there's actually a machine, it's pre core Now, I personally think it's a, it's a good machine, but the problem is the stack is probably light enough for, I'd argue, like a 14-year-old prepubescent child. So it's a little bit annoying there, uh, but at the same time what we do is we've got to jump in so we add a bit of load onto the stack and, uh, and basically this is a movement that uh, creates a bit of a challenge in the shorter range so it's really light and the lengthened and as you drive in, trying to get your elbows in and across, really challenging, it creates a bit more of a challenge as a result of that. Uh, so basically what we're trying to do here is we have it first, we're fresh, we can get our elbows in and across. Uh, me and Finn have three sets where I actually escalated my sets up from two to three uh, last week. So three sets here, one heavier set, and we pretty much just do literally one heavy set and then a slightly lighter set and a slightly lighter set. Reps go up, pretty much as the weight comes down. So this is our first main press. We have to this go into like a vertical press, we'll explain that. So every press has some sort of different emphasis and kind of focus uh, towards what we're doing out of it. But uh, this is obviously our first press, so we'll get into it now. Like I said, let's get it. Let's get it, baby. You say you're taking over my video? Yeah, I said I was like, I feel like I'm the one here. Because I looked over, you were doing a set. With our warm-ups, what we'll do is we'll basically work the weight up and just bring the reps down. So, for example, we did like 23 for like 10 to 15, then we did 50 for like 6 to 8. Now we'll do the stack for 2 to 3, then we'll do the stack plus 20 for 1 to 2, and so on. So the last few reps will be singles or doubles, and that's the same that we do. We do that for everything. That principle applies for pretty much every movement. Because as the session goes on, last couple of exercises, we don't really need many warm-ups, but for the first main compounds, that's the kind of principle that we'll follow for our warm-ups. Yeah. Spot on, mate. Thanks for agreeing, mate. Yeah, yeah, just can't, that's actually perfect. Couldn't have worded it better. Just copy that next time you say it. Yeah, definitely. We're trying to keep his elbows in line with the line of his pecs and pec fibres that we're trying to target, so the sternal pecs. 
so he's not having his elbow up in line with his shoulders where we're going to be sort of flaring and getting a bit more front delt we're trying to be here and aligning with these sternal pec fibers in terms of the line that our elbow and our upper arm path is moving in so we use these these little gym pins. Reese for 10. Yeah, Reese has got a discount code. Pretty sure anyone's got a discount code that buys one of them. <laughs> um, so, thank you to Zach. So, Zach Fotheringham that trains here lets us use these. Uh, we do need to buy our own, so apologies for keep, that we keep stealing them. But they're very helpful because this is really light. <laughs> Looking into the distance, preparing mentally for such a hard set. But this is actually a comedy channel, this, isn't it? That's all it is, just me joking. But yeah. First, pretty much final warm up set. Usually just one or two reps, nothing too taxing. Like Finn said, you don't want to put a warm up set to be fatiguing at all. It's literally just getting in some kind of connection. Fantastic hands out. Oh, that was pressure right there. And uh, just getting acclimated to the weight. So literally one to two reps, that's about to fall off. Finn just caught. And, uh, and then we'll, uh, we'll literally go in for a top set. Um, I'm going to go for 70 kilos added to the stack. Uh, I think it's probably a quest to, to who breaks one of these machines first by adding too much weight to the stack. So Rob, if you see, there's a little problem with that. Probably after you. Yeah, it will. I don't stop. I don't sleep. I don't stop. I don't sleep. I don't stop. This is the hardest part of the session. Fucking horrible. Reese's fault for being such a big cheat and being so strong. These are mine, right? <laughs> Literally about three weeks ago, I bought him some for Christmas and he has it, he's, he's misplaced them. I haven't misplaced them. So he's I still haven't. using mine? Nah, they're, they're in my car that's getting fixed. So I didn't get them out of my car when you got some work getting done. Hmm? For your mum's car. My mum's car, yeah, exactly. My mum's car, mum's everything. It's my mum's jumper, actually, believe it or not. She's quite a big girl. <laughs> <laughs> YouTube video and he'll, he'll invoice it to me. I'll get an email and it'll have below like a PayPal link. Every time there's a camera near Reese, he feels like he has to talk for about eight minutes. So feel free to cut these bits out of Reese, just rambling on. 
know this. Finn's the life of the party at this point. Try and get up to 25. I'm doing the stack. I just keep doing the stack yeah, and just keep running the reps up. Yeah. I'll be alright with those. That was better. Yeah. First, I had a bit of a nightmare. The left side was like really, really sticky. It's a bit temperamental when you put the plates on. It just goes. Sometimes it goes really sticky. Sometimes it feels really smooth. Um, so yeah, the left side was really sticky, and then the handle slipped in my hand on like the fifth rep. But too bad. I didn't have many more. So that left side was just really sticky, but. Like I say, it's temperamental when you add the plates. That's why I, I do a third set just with the stack. Just keep running the reps up because it just feels the smoothest because there's no weight added on. I think it's to do with when you put the plates on the gym pin, it manipulates the loading pattern slightly so it creates more friction on the, on the cable. Not just the fact that it's more weight, it actually like sort of makes the cable or the plates rub against the cable a bit. It feels awkward, doesn't it? Yeah. So we have to use these thinner plates because Reese is doing like seven and a half plates on it. So we did this exercise last week uh, this was the first time that we had done this session together for about I think three rotations and uh, admittedly we went for the wider grip that's what we do in the session uh, it just felt a bit off it felt a bit foreign so we're probably just going to see we actually spoke about potentially swapping this exercise out because we have the close grip on the Friday push session so it's not where there's like it's still a different sort of movement pattern it's going from a close grip to a wide grip elbow pad yeah I elbow pad slightly different but in reality it's one of those where we'll just see how it goes nothing wrong with doing the same movement yeah. twice in a rotation yeah even numerous times like I get on well with this in a neutral grip instead of a pronated, so I do it twice neutral. Yeah. Obviously, we spoke about doing like a dumbbell press or something, which we probably will soon enough. Yeah. Yeah. I but I do. We have been getting on with this. The only reason we didn't is because we loaded it a bit differently. Like we put the fifties on first, and it just fell off. So we know not to do that again. So the same warm-ups like I said on the last one, just work the weight up. We go up a plate at a time, I think Reese goes up two, four, and he might go straight to six. So yeah, we start on two and then I go up a plate at a time. Reese, I think he adds two and then maybe one from there. I think he's gonna do neutral grip. He just says it feels better. So we use these just on the uh, the levers, I'll, I'll put it on quickly. So we just put these under here. So all that does that's just to, to elevate the, the lever slightly so the first rep isn't quite as deep so we're basically pressing that first rep from a more comfortable position it's slightly if you watch the first rep we're about here and every rep after that we're about here so it's very slightly above where our average uh, our sorry our active range would be but it's just so much more comfortable and it doesn't take loads of energy out of you doing that first rep
Six plus. Yeah, I'll get more than six, but we'll just see how it goes. Come on, in. let's go. Easy. Come on, drop. Ooh. Okay, come on. Let's go. Ooh. Let's go. Good. Come on. Oh, yes. Yes, 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 yes. Huh? I can't. <laughs> no, I can't. Can't be at you. No, I can't do this anymore. <laughs> it's, 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 the time frame is way too short. Huh? Like the, I feel like the time frame is way too short. Like this exercise, two days, three days after. I don't yeah, yeah. It's way too I'm going to see how I get on with the day because I didn't get on that well last week. We do it on a Friday, and obviously it's only Monday. So it does feel like it's pretty close together. Yeah, I'm gonna see how mine goes. Because uh, mine's been progressing really well apart from last week. Oh! Finish. Doing 
like what we've done pretty much is like, especially after prep for me, is we just stuck to fairly stable kind of pressing movements. You know, when body weight's lower, you're gonna have less stability. So coming out of a prep, the last thing you wanna do is throw dumbbells in. Um, I actually did throw a dumbbell in, so I did the worst thing uh, that we should have done. But now putting them back in, body fat's a lot higher, and um, probably see it on my cheeks to be fair. Um, so yeah, I can probably stabilize uh, some dumbbells. So going for the 60s, see how they go. Uh, I've done these before on a low incline. I don't think I've done these on a high incline, so it might be a lifetime PR, first ever, uh, first ever time doing them. So yeah, uh, we'll see how these go, and then probably a back off maybe at the 50s. We'll just see how the 60s go. But it'd be rude not to, I'm not gonna do the 55s, so the 60s should be all right. Bad. Probably run that up to a, an eight, so that'll be next session. And then uh, probably go for the 65s, which again is a bit annoying because it's like they only got the 65s here. So we'll have to craft some 70s, I reckon, which will probably be quite cool because I think it'll be the heaviest dumbbells I've ever pressed, especially with this incline. Usually I've always been like a, a low to a to kind of like a flat presser. So yeah, not too bad. Go for the 50s for a back off, probably set 15, that'll be decent. And uh, yeah, we'll see how they go. We're going for the back off. 50s. 50s. I am. Yeah. I don't know how it feels. So uh, Finn's going for the 50s as a back off, so second set, which is something that I think from has a lot more merit than people realise. So obviously with a top set and back off set, you almost want to obviously for a back off set go live set, but with a new movement, Finn's almost gone for the 45s, got that baseline kind of neurological connection, should we say, you're not going to get a neurological connection in one set, but you're going to at least kind of get a little bit more efficient to know what the movement kind of requires. So then he's going a little bit heavier, which most likely will result in him opening up next rotation on the 50s. So it's something that I always say to people, if they're not too skilled or they're early on in their training, usually doing a high rep set first is actually probably going to be quite good and then going slightly heavier where when you're a bit more efficient I feel like there's more merit to go in uh, potentially a little bit heavier and then go a little bit lighter uh, so obviously I went for the 60s we go for the 50s Finn went for the 45s now he's going to the 50s next week probably open up on the 50s he'll be fresher so he's going to get more reps and therefore he'll then look to build from that point oh Good, solid, good, right, good fucking rep. And again, and again, get tight, get tight, get tight. Strike! Yes, yes. Yeah. Yeah, love it. Yeah, love it. Yeah. Fucking hell. <laughs> Mate, I'm so out of practice, I can't kick them off. Yeah. Mate, you had it like the top of your quad. So usually we have post grip Smith now, but this guy says he's just got on it. There are two Smiths, but we prefer them the hammer strength one because it's on a slight incline slash decline so we can press in a more of a sort of natural pattern up and back so while we're waiting we'll do a fly because it's not really going to impact the close grip press too much i just do a costal fly piece of the curricular fly
sets on this. So my total chest volume for the entire week is literally the three sets on the, uh, the flat press that you saw, the D-handle press, and two sets on here. That's my only chest volume, because my chest is one of my stronger body parts. Frequencies at once a week, and volumes only. It was at four sets, but then I've added a set to this, just because it's not very demanding, and I really enjoy it. I get a really good connection on it. So especially if the D-handle press doesn't go that well, like it didn't today, then I'll, I'll add an extra press here. But I've been, I've been doing two for the past few weeks. Um, so yeah, chest volume's like really, really low. But still, because of the loads that I'm moving, not that I'm insanely strong, I'm not, I'm not strong as Big Reese over here. But because I'm moving a decent amount of load, and because my connection is really, really good with my chest, like it still takes till about Friday to recover. Whereas body parts like my hamstrings, for example, my delts, um, they recover really quickly because I'm not that strong at them. Calves, fast, fast arms, I don't train arms a lot, but yeah, because they recover a lot quicker, I'll train them more frequently. And also because they're weaker body parts as well. Second set. I'll do because it's a bit more like if I do. Oh, I, need to, I need close grip smith tricep dominant compound um reese does a dip on another day and I, i'd love to do a dip but it just ruins me like in terms of my scapula i've had issues with it for like 18 months so yeah i just stay away from a dip i've tried it a few times because I, I really like the movement but i've not been able to do it for ages so i'm doing this um reese is literally just putting a plate underneath the bench now so it's basically just to elevate and um, basically put us on a very slight incline but not as much of an incline as if we use the first click of the bench uh, it just feels more comfortable um, we don't feel like i almost feel like our scapula gets too restricted when we're on a direct flat bench very slight incline it feels a lot more comfortable um, grip width through about shoulder width trying to keep the elbows underneath the, the wrists all the way through and trying to like i almost imagine trying to like feel through my tricep all the way through otherwise you can easily let the elbows flare out and the chest starts to take over um, so yeah just trying to really emphasize the, the triceps on this Kill rep, kill rep, drive. Yes, good, and again, and again. Come on. Yes, easy, easy, good. One, one rep, one rep. Come on, there we go. Come on, come on, drive. Yes, yeah, a little bit, a little bit. Yeah, lovely bit. Look good. I think, the, I think the bench is off center. Yeah, because I kept having to move my left hand. It felt better than last week. But yeah, just playing around with it. Yeah, the bench. Last time, but you had the headphones in, so you just ignored me. Oh, okay. Cheers, mate. Uh, I got three for 11 and one, so 11 reps and one assisted rep. So this is three again. Ideally, I said, I said last time 13 uh, on this, and I got it. So 13, that's it. And uh, then I'm gonna go three, seven, five, or four plates per side, depending on how the set goes. So yeah, be, be decent. Hopefully, 13 reps. If I don't get 13 reps, then I don't know. Well. Um, just cut it out, cut it out, please. Don't let it be. One. Yeah. One more. Let's go. Good. Easy. Good, man. Strong. That's like my head. I'll put five plates on the side of I think it's because of the bench. I got 13. <laughs> Could have got 15 though. Bottled two more. Imagine. Oh. So the reason that I bought Reese his own knee slash elbow sleeves is so we didn't have to do this and take them off and put them on and take them off and put them on. It's very annoying. Reese seems to think it's fine. I get a bit pissed off with it. So will you please get he, me he mentions it every time, but then like, and I and I mentioned to him throughout the whole of like the two or three lockdowns he trained at mine for literally the entire duration, and I never once said, oh, it's annoying we have to share this kit, you know. <laughs> Meanwhile, we're in the gym. He's like, oh god, the same elbow sleeves. It's awful. Where did I train? At your mum. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 
2.875. Three soon. Come on. Three points soon. Everything right. Ooh. Three. Yes. Two. Yep. Whoop. Yes. Yeah, good, mate. Yeah, good. Easy, easy, easy. Yes, yes. Good. One, take one, take one. Come on. With me now. Come on, come on. Yes. Yeah, lovely. One rep up. Felt better than last time again. Only show. one guy that actually won it. <laughs> yeah, I actually won a show, so that was that. I think I'll, I'll say that on the intro of my video. I talk about I talk about how well I did last year. That's all it'll be. Not not a highlight back then or anything. Like I said, this is the step up. He's just wears this PCA top. Every, everyone that sees him when he's wearing it, he's like, oh, by the way, guys, I did PCA. But he just won the Mickey Mouse one for the first time. As soon as there's anyone decent, he, he got beat. <laughs> So that's all the, the bulk of the, the hard work done. So you literally just got two arm move, well two bicep movements, two tricep movements, and then a little bit of side delts, and then we're done. Um, so yeah, it's going to be what 15 minutes from here. This, this bit we always smash through because you don't need much rest time between. So I'll often do like a high rep set first on, to be fair, on, on both biceps and triceps, I quite like it, just to get a lot more blood flow there first, because obviously I've not done any bicep work at all this session so far. So I'll often do like a, a higher rep set first, and then a loading set, and then a back off from there, because I do three sets on these. Again, bicep volume and frequency is very, very low, because they're a stronger body part of mine. Shannon gets to see. Um, we do so. We do this first as the first bicep movement. Uh, it's a little bit more focused on the length and range. So obviously with our four, um, sorry, with our humerus, our upper arm behind our, our to torso, it's basically lengthening the bicep more than obviously if we're in front. So we're starting off already in a more of a lengthened position. And then you'll see when I failed, then so I'm failing in this length and range. Last few reps are really really tough here, and then I can almost get that final bit because it drops off there just in terms of how we set up the movement and then the second um, bicep movement is a little bit more short and range dominant you'll see it in a minute um, but it's also a little bit more focused on the, the brachialis which is the muscle between the biceps and the triceps so almost if you like to fill that gap between the bicep and the tricep and bring up a thicker arm and that's the one we'll do after this which we'll show you different movements here just because I get on really well with a single arm cuffed overhead extension and Reese doesn't he just doesn't seem to get on with it I have quite a few clients who don't get on with it as well so Reese is doing an alternative which if you don't get on with what I'm doing is a good idea um, I really like this it aligns everything well um, it's going to target the long head of the tricep a little bit more which is the one sort of on the inside um, and also in terms of like the profile I'm going to pause here where it's generally more challenging but also I'm stronger here and then as it drops off as I extend the elbow um, I'm going to just have a slight pause at the top so longer pause at the bottom on this one I'm 
one thing I should say is be careful with the angles because honestly, like this this movement just makes your arms look tiny no matter what. Like, there's, I've never hey, videoed hey, myself. Hey, huh? Yeah, that that arm will look alright. The one up. Yeah, the one up looks horrendous. <laughs> I have to get Reese to do it. Reese is the one that keeps putting her on the floor. Are you doing the drops? Yeah, sound. saying earlier where we're focusing a little bit more on like the, the brachialis so use Reese as my model the muscle between here to like bring up that thickness you might see like people tend to have sometimes like you can really see their tricep and then they've got like just like a bicep peak um, often that's because they've almost not got that, that muscle between something um, that I actually need when I'm fat I can't really yeah, tell that's different. It is, but it's when I was leaner we both were fat. thinking a bit more here so a little bit more of an emphasis towards kind of neutral grip kind of curls yeah, look, really good, mate. Really good. good. More than me. Come on. One. Okay, straight back in. We do the same thing, but well, we don't do the same thing, we do the opposite. Um, basically now we just put it up to the top and then we do a tricep push down, same concept with the, the double drop set. Um, the reason we do the double drop set is a little bit more time efficient um, and also just to get a good amount of blood flow there. We treat this as like a metabolic stress movement if you like at the end of the session. Is that, yeah? yeah. Oh, there we go. 
How you feeling, Finn? How you feeling? Yeah, good, yeah. Feeling fresh? Yeah. Feeling very fresh, that's what it is. I always say to clients, like, a push day is like a rest day. Because it's not hard, is it? No. But I do feel trashed after this. It's interesting, like, the overall loading relative to like a pool session or a lower session, it's not the same. But at the same time, there's a lot of volume in the session uh, for, for what we need. So yeah, it's still challenging even though obviously it's only three main presses where if you compare that to like a lower session, our lower sessions are brutal, our pool sessions are brutal, especially Finn's, Finn's is worse than mine. He reminds me every Saturday, which you'll see most likely in the next video on my channel. So that'll be on Reese Fitch's channel. And I'll, I'll obviously appear way more in it because it's on Reese's channel. So that's what we're, <laughs> that's what we're obviously doing apparently. <laughs> <laughs> right, we're leaning against the wall. No, I'm, I'm, I'm leaning forward. Uh, right, that's it, guys. Um, that's the the push and arm session wrapped up. Cheers for that, mate. Um, feel free to obviously ask any questions. Uh, I said to Reese that we're not gonna like. Obviously, we explain quite a lot, but I don't want to be explaining the ins and outs of every single exercise. I kind of just want it to be a bit chatting, more natural yeah, training. just chatting. And and obviously, sometimes when we chat, we cover things why we're doing it anyway. When we chat to each other, or we cover like our reasoning behind maybe doing a higher rep set before uh, a loaded set or something like that but yeah because we're going to be filming quite often like i'm looking at doing videos once a week um i'm not going to be explaining absolutely ins and outs of everything because we're going to cover them through numerous videos anyway uh, but yeah please drop the video a like if you liked it if you didn't like it don't be one of them that dislikes it just go away go somewhere else go to recent videos it doesn't actually show dislikes now on youtube oh does it not no oh, i dislike all you yeah. like don't worry but please like it um <laughs> subscribe if you haven't already um Follow Pete on Instagram as well. Again, link will be in the description and we'll catch you all in the next video.